Hey everybody, it's me, Kirk Maston at Maston Labs, and we've got a very special episode for you today. We are going to be walking through how to get a perfect light and airy look for your photo. So this is the, the look that everybody wants, um, and it can be frustrating if you don't quite exactly know what, what's going on that you, that's making it so you're not getting that look. So the way I have things structured for today is that I'm going to be using uh, community images submitted by our amazing Mass Labs community. Uh, and I'm going to go through images that just hit everything out of the park with you know, being shot exactly the right way to prepare you for a light and airy look. And then I'm going to show you some images where there's a few elements that are missing that will make it impossible to get a light and airy look. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a few images that are almost all the way there that could be improved just a little bit. So again, these are all community images. Uh, and I'm really grateful for our huge Facebook community uh, at Mass and Labs. And thank you for sending in so many good things. All right, let's get started. So the light and airy look. What is the light and airy look? So some people think of it as like the definition of fine art photography, although fine art photography covers a lot of things, but in general, the light and airy look is a very light pastel look, uh, very light tones. Uh, it's very light, I mean, light and airy says it all. That's the look that light and airy is. That's what people want. And I've been shooting for 20 years. I did wedding photography for most of that time. Um, I shot a lot of film, I still shoot mostly film, and the light and airy look was something I went to a lot. There are dark and moody photographers, and you know who you are, uh, and that's a really great look too. It's just a different mood for your photos. But today, we're going to be focusing on light and airy only. And for all of the images, I'm going to be editing with the Fuji Original Pack. So this is the second pack that Mass and Labs ever created, and it's been updated a few times. Um, you know, as I learn more, I make it better and better, but this is the pack and it comes from the film that defines light and airy. So this is where the light and airy movement and everything started right here. And I'm going to walk you through it from beginning to end. So are you ready? Yes. All right, let's get started. So I made this light and airy checklist and Let's see who shot this. This is um, Michaela Hewins shot this picture on the right. So thank you for sending it in. Uh, but I've edited this already with Fuji 400H from Mass and Labs. And I've boiled down the conditions you need to have in order to make a foundation for a light and airy photo. So here's the checklist if you want to get a light and airy photo. The lighting needs to be either backlit or open shade. So backlit means that the light source, the main light source like the sun, is behind the subject somewhere. Open shade means that the light isn't really coming from any one direction, it's just very like diffuse and evenly lighting your subject. So it's all very, very even. The second part that makes a photo feel light and airy or the way that we expect a photo to, a photo to feel light and airy is the location that you're shooting in. You're not going to get a light and airy look shooting outside of a mall. You're not going to get a light and airy look shooting inside of a cafeteria or in a busy office building or in the street. I mean, you could get it in the street, I guess, if you had everything just right. But most, for the most part, you need a location that's very simple, not cluttered, that is either white, mostly white, or very neutral, meaning like no big strong colors, no big billboards with big you know, words or anything on them, uh, or some kind of vegetation. So like a forest, um, maybe an open field, just a, a, a setting that is, I guess, sophisticated and simple and light. So the setting itself has to be light. Um, the next, the third thing is the wardrobe. So if your subject is wearing like a really busy shirt, like stripes or like huge contrast between different parts of their clothing um, or any kind of graphics, that, uh, that kind of automatically kills, it, kills your photo from being truly like a fine art, light and airy photo. So wardrobe is super important. Uh, and then the last thing that's really important, which uh, trips a lot of people up, 
is that we associate a light and airy look with a very shallow depth of field. So when you have a shallow depth of field, meaning your lens is, the aperture is all the way open or nearly all the way open, you have a lot of fall off from your subject being sharp to the background being blurry. And we associate this subconsciously, for some reason, with film, and in particular, a light and airy look. So if you're shooting your, your lens at you know, f4 or 5.6 or f8, you will not be able to get this part of the light and airy look. You need to be shooting it at like f1.2, 1.6, uh, f2. I shot a lot at like f2.2. That would be the maximum uh, depth of field that I would have for my lens. Anything above that and you start to kind of lose that film look. And kind of part of that lens thing too is it's in general, a lot of light and airy photos are shot with a normal lens, meaning like a 50 millimeter lens to a telephoto lens. So anything, uh, any uh, lens length that's longer than 50, like say an 85, that's a very classic portrait lens or a 135, you get that really nice separation from sharp to blurry in the background. And that, and, and also the compression so the lens compression, meaning that things aren't distorted. When you have those elements, you, you've set the stage for a photo right out of the gate that's going to look light and airy without any preset. So you've noticed that I have not talked about two things. I have not talked about how you expose the image. So I haven't said anything about like underexpose or overexpose. That, that will not make your image light and airy. In fact, I recommend just shooting normal exposure. And the second thing that I have not talked about are presets. You should be able to get, and this is just sacrilege, you should be able to get a light and airy edit, a perfect light and airy edit, without any presets at all. If your photo cannot look light and airy without any preset, it, it just was not shot correctly to get that look. That being said, Mass and Labs will give you a true film look on top of that nice edit, and that's what we're here for. We're not a magic bullet that will transform any photo into any photo. No, there's no good preset in the world that can do that, that's worth your time or money. But if you get the image right as a, as a skilled photographer, and you, you remember this checklist, you're setting yourself up for success, and you will get a light and airy image. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of images now and go through the checklist and show you where things hit and where they miss and diagnose things. And then I'll also do a bunch of edits with community images. So if that sounds good, let's get started. Okay, so this first image, it's an open shade and it's slightly backlit. So if you look behind the couple, the, the light is probably coming through diffused like overhead um, clouds, but it's not harsh like straight down on top of them. It's coming from a little bit off to the side so you don't have like any kind of harsh light uh, they're wearing or they're in a very neutral location if you look at the location they're in it's not busy there's no busyness in the photo um, it's very neutral like the colors behind them you know these are very neutral colors like gray green tan white very important uh, their wardrobe is very neutral uh, I mean she is wearing a very bright kind of pink dress but it all works. It's, there's nothing garish about this and all the colors really flow together. This is like a fine art photography color palette in a photo. You've got like peach, sage green, light yellow. Her dress is a little bit, you know, the most different thing in the photo, but everything works. And the lens is, this is an 85 millimeter lens shot at 1.6. So the aperture is 1.6. So it's very shallow depth of field. So this hits everything on the checklist. All right, here's another photo. This is by Daniel Yusenko. I, I picked this photo because it's not shot in front of a forest or anything. This is just in a city, but it works. This is shot in France. Maybe, maybe because it's France it works. I don't know, France is so light and airy in itself. Um, but they are in open shade. So the lighting is open shade. The location is very neutral. There's nothing in this location. There's no big red blotches or, or colorful things or like a taxi passing behind them or anything. It's all very neutral. 
Uh, their wardrobe is very neutral. She's wearing kind of a champagne colored dress. He's wearing like a, you know, like a gray brown uh, suit. Um, and the, the lens used was a 58 millimeter lens shot at 1.4. Now this image was shot at f8. It would be too busy and it would really lose that effect. But as you can see, it's a very nice, perfect example of a light and airy look. Okay. So here is another photo. This is by, uh, yes, Val Valerio Costilla. I, I, love, I love all of Valerio's work. It's really nice. So thank you for sending this in. Um, I picked this image because it's shot inside. This is not even outside. This is inside uh, with, I'm assuming, window light, but it's nice, clean window light. This isn't backlit or open shade but it still works because it's, it's fairly evenly lit. There's detail throughout the whole thing. And what makes this work, despite the lighting not being uh, softer, is that it has, a, it has a, essentially a white background. She's wearing neutral colors uh, and it's shot completely wide open, eight, an 85 millimeter lens at 1.6. So this, this image has all the ingredients of a light and airy photo. Now, if she was against like some dark red bricks inside with like a yellow dress on uh, and like a shelf behind her with some pictures on it, it would not feel light and airy anymore because it no longer satisfies this checklist. And then here's a photo of mine from a long time ago. Uh, so this is in front of vegetation, but you can see that they're backlit from behind and they're in open shade. So it's kind of the one-two combo, like, you know, this is the light I was always looking for when I was shooting outside for a wedding, like in the forest. I'd always try to get opposite the light so that I could shoot back at my subjects with the light behind them. And then I knew that in post or on film, uh, I could get all the detail back and overexpose it and get that light and airy look. But this is backlit with open shade. Um, the location is vegetation and it's fairly neutral except for these flowers, but I want the flowers to stand out. Uh, their wardrobe is fairly neutral. It's all blues and white, and it's shot pretty much wide open. So this is shot with a 50 millimeter lens. That was my favorite lens uh, throughout my whole career, and it was shot at 2.2, and that was kind of my go-to aperture because it gave me a little bit of wiggle room if I didn't get my focus completely right, but it was also wide open enough that I could get that really nice separation between my subject and the background. So there you go. There's my photo. All right. So here, here are a few photos sent in by the community and I'm going to do an edit and show you how they cannot, even though they're nice photos, they cannot get to a light and airy look for different reasons. So, uh, this is shot. This is a, a Nikon file. So I'm going to go to Nikon. Uh, where is it? Here, here it is. 400 H. I applied it. I'm going to do um, cloudy for the white balance. Uh, yeah, cloudy for the white balance. I'm going to take away a little bit of the magenta cast here by sliding the green or the tint slider towards green. And I'm going to increase the exposure and do all soft. Okay, that, and I'm gonna crop it a little bit differently um, so that you can see it. Or actually, I'm gonna go to, to it full screen. Okay, so this is as close as I can get to a light and airy, a light and airy edit for this image. But it doesn't look like this. Now, there are a few reasons why this image I mean, it's, it's a really nice image. It's a really great edit. I would be happy to send my client this image, um, but it's not quite the light and airy look that people want. And let's go through the checklist to find out why. First of all, the lighting. This is lit from the side. So you can see the side light coming in on the left side of the woman here and the baby. And then it gets much darker on his face on this side. So we're already we've got side, side light. It's not super harsh, but it's enough to kind of start um, taking away the softness of the whole image. 
Uh, I would say the biggest issue with this image is the location and the wardrobe. So the location is very, very busy. You can see there's these uh, guardrails, there are marks on the street, there are these leaves. And then if you look at their wardrobe, uh, she's got polka dots, he's got green, you know, I, I would actually say it's mostly her dress. These polka dots and this blue kind of throw me off. Um, and then, I don't know, like, in general, like light and airy photos, people really like to stylize them with like, I don't know, flowy dresses and linen and peach colors and things like that. So their wardrobe isn't cohesive in a light and airy fine art style, even though it's a wonderful family photo. Uh, and then if you look at the lens, it's a 50 millimeter lens, but it was shot at 4.5. So the aperture is 4.5. One thing that could, two things that would improve this image to make it more light and airy would be to find a part of the road that doesn't have these marks on it and then to shoot more wide open. So shoot it at like f2.2. Um, and then to wait for a time of day when the light isn't coming from the side. But it's still a really nice photo. So this photo is from Siarhai Sarachuk. And it's a really cool action shot, but I picked this image because this is a, this is a kind of image I would see in the community where People are frustrated they're not getting, again, like this look, or this look, or this look. And they assume that it's possible to get that look for any photo. And, and this is a great photo, but they try to edit it and it's just not possible. And I'll show you why. Um, and I'll, this is unedited. I'll do my best to edit it. So here's Fuji 400H neutral. I'll do full screen. Okay, so here's Fuji 400H neutral. I'm gonna increase the exposure. I'm gonna use all soft to kind of balance out that contrast. And, oh man, I'm gonna do cloudy white balance. And that's about as close as I can get. And it's not quite satisfying. It doesn't feel like a light and airy image. And the reason for this is that first of all, the lighting is very harsh. We're in a split lighting condition where we've got, like I would say near sunset light coming in straight from the left, really harsh uh, compared to the shadows on the, on the right side of the image. So that immediately takes away any possibility of this image being um, light and airy. The location is super, super busy. There's a lot of lines coming through it. Uh, the wardrobe is not neutral peach or white. It's very bold and vibrant. And the way that it's shot, it's shot with a wide angle lens at f4. So basically, it's a great photo, and I don't want, I don't want this person to take it the wrong way, but it, pa it doesn't pass any part of the checklist to be a light and airy photo. It just will not work. What's interesting is that if you let go of the idea of this being a light and airy photo, what it really is is a vibrant, fun, active photo. And I would use, personally, I would use something like um, Ektar on it and just lean in to the fact that it's contrasty and that it's shot towards the end of the day. So with Ektar, you get that beautiful sun, sunlight. Uh, you're actually embracing and playing with the contrast in the image. And you can see her expression and their movement even better. So like this image was never meant to be light and airy, ever. It, in fact, it works really well as like a colorful, vibrant summertime image. So I just applied Ektar. I would maybe increase exposure a tiny bit and then call it a day. And then this last photo, this last photo is beautiful. Uh, Abul Shah sent it in. And when I saw it, my immediate reaction was, man, this is gonna make a really nice light and airy image. And then I started editing it. So this is a Nikon file. Let's do 400H again. So I applied 400H, going to increase the exposure. Uh, I think it needs to be maybe a little bit more magenta. Yeah, like there. And I'll try to do all soft. I'm gonna do my best to make this light and airy. So there's all soft. I'm gonna increase the exposure again. 
Now, this image is very close to being a lightenary image, but it's not. It, it is what it is. It, it, it's a beautiful image, but it's not really that fine art, really light feeling. And that's mostly because of the, not even the aperture it was shot at, but just the busyness of the frame and that there's no separation between her and her background. So this is mostly open shade. She's in a doorway, so it passes that. Uh, the location is vegetation. That's fine. The wardrobe is not exactly neutral. If she was in like a peach or white or champagne colored dress, then, then it would drift more towards the light and airy look that people expect. Um, and here's the, the crazy little technicality. So on the lens part, it's a 50 millimeter lens shot at 1.8. So it shot like all the way open. And yet, it doesn't work on the lens part because she's in the same plane of focus as the vegetation around her. So if you moved her way out in front, it would blur out that, you know, it would blur out the vegetation around her a little bit and separate her. Um, even if you found a door, doorway that was a little bit wider so she wasn't touching the vegetation, that might help. But the fact that so much is in focus in that, that plane kind of negates the fact that it was shot at 1.8. You could shoot this at f8 and it would look identical to this or f11. So in those, in those cases, it doesn't work, but it's still a beautiful photo. Okay, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one is from Raymond Limbers. Uh, who says, or who asks, uh, when is the best time to do a backlit image? Okay, so Raymond is asking, when is the best time to do a backlit image? So I think the best time to do a backlit image is when I would say any time that the sun is low enough that it's at least in general forty-five degrees behind your subject. So any higher in the sky than 45 degrees, then you get a really hot sky, like a blown out, completely blown out sky, and the lighting starts to get kind of hazy and harsh on the subject. Uh, Ginger Willard asks, how would you shoot a family of four at F22 and have everybody focus? Okay, so Ginger asks, how would you shoot a family of four at a wide open aperture like 2.2 and, and keep everyone in focus? Great question. Um, let me see, I don't have an example in this group, but what I would do is I would shoot with a longer lens. So, if you shoot with a 50 millimeter lens at 2.2, you create a certain amount of separation between your subject and the background. Another way to get that separation is to use a longer lens. So when you're shooting at say 135, if you had a lens that was you know, 135 millimeters, you could shoot it at like f4 and get everybody in focus as long as they're in the same plane of focus and still have a very blurry background. And that's what I would do. One little trick that I learned when I was shooting a lot of family, families and things like that is that I made sure to get everybody as lined up on the plane of focus as I could before I started. So I'm going to turn my hand this way. So imagine you're looking straight down on people. If, if this is a person and this is a person and I'm standing up here, this person is going to be in focus and this person is going to be out of focus. If you can move them into the same plane of focus, you could shoot at f2 and everyone would be in focus. If you're careful enough about getting everybody aligned on that plane of focus. If you have a very large group of people and there are people standing in front and some in back, say like rows of people like a giant family, then my suggestion is to get a longer lens like an 85 and shoot at a higher aperture like f4 or 5.6. And then you're getting everybody in focus from front to back, but everything before the group of people and everything after the group of people are going to be blurry. And that's what people associate with fine art. I hope that helps. All right, one more question. What is my, so Kiana asks, what is your recommendation for shooting in harsh light? Kiana asks, what is my recommendation for shooting in harsh light? 
don't. Don't. Yeah, I mean, you can't make harsh light into soft light. Uh, my recommendation is if you have harsh light, move your subject into a doorway or under some kind of open shade facing, facing towards the light. So what does that mean? It means like find an, an, an awning or roof or foliage that doesn't let dappled light through. Put your subject under that so that it diffuses the light and it's even on your subject and then have them face out towards the light, not, not like back towards the house or the tree trunk, but out. And then if you stand in front of them, you're gonna be shooting them under diffused light and that'll soften it and give you that light you want. All right, so I hope that helps set the stage for the ingredients for a light and airy photo. And let's move on now to the edit. Now that you have, now that you've followed the rules or the checklist and you've got this photo that, that can be light and airy without any preset at all, how do you make it perfect with presets? All right. So this is, this photo is by Howard Treby. And I've condensed the, the tips for a light and airy edit down to six things. A few of them are optional. And this is the, the best workflow. Again, I, don't, I want you to, to remember that the, the starting uh, exposure that you're working at doesn't even factor into this. Get that out of your head that it even matters. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters if you're trying to capture a super wide range of contrast, then yes, if you have a Nikon D810 or something, yeah, sure, shoot it like way underexposed so you can save the sky, but it is not the magic bullet. So don't worry about that part. And I'm going to show you images that are like way underexposed and overexposed and perfectly exposed, and they're all going to get there just fine. So Howard sent this in, uh, and the workflow that I recommend is that you apply the preset first. So we're going to do Fuji 400H uh, neutral. And then we're going to apply lens correction. If you are shooting your images according to the first checklist, AKA wide open, you're gonna to need to almost always apply lens correction. Because when you shoot a lens wide open, you get vignetting and distortion around the corners. And that can really throw off your exposure later when you edit. So you don't wanna do that at the end, you wanna do it up front. So I applied the preset, I'm gonna do lens correction on, and you can see the image changed a little bit. I'll go back and forth to show you. So this is before, and this is after. Now we've got the preset applied, lens correction, and then you need to adjust exposure. And for most people, especially in this day and age when everyone is super underexposing for who knows why, it's just kind of a trend these days, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to increase the exposure. So in general, most of the time you're gonna have to increase exposure. So I'm gonna increase it. And you can see that this image that we started with that seemed really dark and like, you know, it didn't look like a light and airy image. It has all the ingredients already and I've barely done anything. So I've increased the exposure. Now I'm going to adjust the white balance and tint. So let's see here. I think daylight looks really good. Uh, and then we can select a tone profile if we want. A tone profile uh, is a special tool that we've added to all of our preset packs which lets you get more detail out of highlights or shadows or increase the contrast in highlights or shadows for different effects. So originally it came from our film scanner, the Fuji Frontier, and it was a way to solve for blown out skies. You could bring that detail back without affecting everything else. Uh, but you can use it in different photos to slightly adjust them without changing them completely. So in this case I would use Highlight Soft which is gonna bring back a little bit of detail in their dress and in the sky. So there's Highlight Soft. I'll show you before and after. So this is before and that's after. And with it applied, I can even go up in exposure just a little bit more because it's retained all that detail just like film would. So there's an example of an edit for this photo. 
Here is another photo that we received. Um, actually, yeah, from Sirhai Sarachuk. I actually put this in the impossible to edit category when I first saw it, and then later I played with it and found that even though it doesn't satisfy hardly any of the requirements for light and airy photo, it still can get there. I'm, I'm actually quite amazed. So let me straighten it real quick. Now I'm going to apply Fuji 400H. And I'm going to do Fuji 400H for every photo, just for every photo in this edit, just to keep it consistent. So there's 400H. I'm going to apply lens correction on. I'm going to adjust the uh, exposure up. And then I'm going to adjust the temperature and tint until everything looks as good as I can make it. So they're a little bit magenta. I'm going to go towards green and a little bit warmer. And now looking at it, I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit again to about here. Now that is, th this is just totally shocking to me that this photo can get to a somewhat light and airy look considering that it was shot indoors in mixed lighting. Uh, I think the reason that it can get there is because it satisfies two things out of this list. The location is like totally neutral. Everything is either white or champagne colored or green. And then their wardrobe is completely neutral. She's wearing a champagne colored dress. He's wearing kind of a brownish yellow vest and he's bald like me. So there's no hair to kind of make things more complicated. Um, and all things considered, yeah, it's a wide angle lens, but it's shot at F2. So there's a little bit of separation between them in the background. And even though it doesn't satisfy that much of the checklist, it's not that bad for being shot indoors and getting to a light and airy look. Okay, I'll show you the, actually I'll show you the before and after because it's really wild. There's the before and after of this photo. So thank you for sending it in. All right, so back to a photo that's a little more traditionally light and airy. So this is by Amber Renea DeHalt. And this is a Canon file. So here is Fuji 400H. Lens correction on. Increasing exposure. I'm going to adjust the, uh, the temperature looks about right to me. I'm going to just adjust tint towards green just a tiny bit. Uh, why? Because I see a little bit of magenta in her face. I'm also looking, uh, at her shirt and a little bit of this tree trunk and there's a little bit of a global magenta to it. So I'm going to go towards green just a tiny bit and then uh, I'm going to do all soft. All soft brings back detail in the highlights and it brings out the shadows just a little bit and that is like just a simple light and airy look. It, it satisfies all the requirements. Shot it with a 50 millimeter lens at 1.8 Really nice, uh, really nice uh, background blur. She's wearing very neutral uh, colors and the background is very neutral and beautiful. So that's an easy light and airy edit. This photo is also by Amber. This was in my category of this is gonna be really hard to edit and it surprisingly wasn't. So I'm gonna do Fuji 400H neutral. Uh, apply l uh, the uh, lens correction, although it doesn't really need it because it was shot at f5, but I'm going to increase the exposure and then do white balance a little bit warmer and a little bit towards magenta. Why magenta? Because if I look at this guy's butt, it looks a little bit green to me. And that is a nice light and airy look. It could be better if it was shot a little bit later in the day where we don't have such a bright sky. Uh, and if it was shot a little shallower aperture, so like at f2.2, it, it would be more of a light and airy photo, but it's really not bad considering you started with this, super underexposed. So that's really cool. 
and my tips for making it better would be later in the day and shallower aperture. All right, so this is, yes, we have a question. Uh, just, it lines up. Um, Claudia wants to know, uh, she says, how do I know the limit of increasing exposure? So oh, that's a good with, question. With that photo that you just made, like, how do you know how far you go? Okay, with the photo I just did? So Claudia asks, how far can you increase exposure or what's the limit? So let's focus on that for a second. There's a few ways you can figure this out. Two ways in particular. And it depends on what you want. Now if you're a purist who can't stand the thought of there being anything pure white in your photo, then you should, I don't know, the lightenary look might not even be for you in particular. Um, it might not be something you like. If you're okay with the sky being just totally white, which I am, and if you look at a lot of fashion magazines, it happens all the time and it doesn't make it a bad photo. You don't have to have detail all the way through the photo. But if you can accept those things, here is what I look for. I look for the bulk, I look for the bulk of the image, like the midtones, to be exposed correctly. So I'm looking at his back and her back and her back, and when those look correct to me, if my subjects look correct, that's perfect. That's where I want it to be. I don't really care if there's sky detail, nor do a lot of fine art photographers. They do not care. Now, if you get really hung up on that and everything has to have detail in it, you could add like a sky overlay or something like that, or you could try to do some really fancy lighting setup with a softbox and try to balance it out. But in general, I just let the sky go where it needs to go. And to me, that is the perfect exposure. The second choice you have is you can hit the J key and you can actually see where things are becoming pure white. And you can adjust to that. So if you don't want anything to be absolutely pure white, then that's where your limit is. So in this photo, I've already applied all soft, which maximizes the highlight retention in the photo. If, if that's still not enough, then I would just bump the exposure down to where we're just avoiding that um, red stuff. And that would be my new exposure right there. I personally don't care if the sky goes completely white. I'd rather have my subject um, look like that if I'm going for a lightenary look. So I hope that helps. All right, I've got just a few more images to edit and then we'll wrap it up. Um, if you have any more questions, please ask them. I'll take two more questions before we end. Okay, this is by Nikki Cruz. Let's see how this one goes. So, Fuji 400H, lens correction on. It was shot at, at 1.8 with an 85, so you, I recommend lens correction. I'm gonna increase the exposure. And now I'm gonna do, I don't know, cloudy white balance or maybe open shade. Open shade's perfect, okay. These white balance settings on the side, they're just a shortcut. Um, sometimes you'll have to just adjust it manually, which is totally fine too. So I'm actually gonna go a little bit warmer than um, open shade. It's right about there. This photo is interesting because it's not your traditional light and airy photo. It's not like a flowy dress in, in Tuscany in Italy. Um, it's just like a girl at a skate park with a jean jacket, but it still kind of works because it's really out of focus, like the, or the, the separation of the subject from the background is perfect. Um, it's fairly neutral, the background. It's a little bit busy. I would, I would have tried to have moved away from these banners or whatever they are in the background, but she's wearing a very simple outfit, so it works. Um, and that's not bad, so thanks for sending, in, sending it in, Nikki. This is by Christopher Thomas. I'm going to apply, uh, let's see, this is a Fuji file. So I'm gonna do Fuji 400H. Lens correction on, exposure up. Uh, this needs to be warmer. And maybe a little bit more magenta. This is a tough image because I can't actually see her skin that well through the veil, but it still works. Um, and then I'm gonna do, nah, all soft is too much. I'm gonna just do highlight soft. Yeah, highlight soft brings back the detail in her veil. 
So here's the before and after of this photo. Uh, this is a photo where you would see it, and, you, and my bias in my mind would be, that of course this is a light and airy photo. It's a woman with a veil over her face in front of a green forest. It's a beautiful photo, and it would be, I don't know, more light and airy if she was separated from the background more. So if she took just a, I don't know, four or five steps to her left away from those bushes, those bushes would be out of focus and there, more, more focus would be on her and it would feel more light and airy. Um, I would also try to avoid having these things in the top of the frame that are super in focus because they're kind of competing with her, but it's still a great photo. Here is another photo. This is by Abul Shah. I like this one because we get, you know, a really nice wide range of skin tones. Um, this is something people are always interested in, so I, I added this one in here. If I do my edit, I'll show you how close it can get to a light and airy look. So this is a Nikon file. Oh, where are you, Nikon? Right here. Okay, Fuji 400H. Lens correction on. Hmm. Didn't need it. Strange. And this might be a third-party lens that doesn't have a correction on it yet. Let me see here. Okay, there is no, uh, there's no profile for this lens. So that means we need to fix the vignetting um, by hand, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Okay, so I took a little of the vignetting away, and I'm going to increase the exposure. Now, looking at them, I think that this would benefit from being a little bit more um, green. And the reason I say that is I look at his face and he's got a little redness um, in the shadows of his face. Just a small thing, but it needs to be a little more green. There we go. And a little warmer, just a tiny bit. Fuji's a cool look, so it shouldn't go super warm. That looks about perfect. And I think I overdid it on the vignetting correction. Let me pull that back. There we go. All right, perfect. So, this almost nails everything perfectly. Uh, what I would do to get a little bit better light and airy look would be moving them a little bit closer to the camera and away from the background so you can blur that out just a little bit more. Um, and the, the wardrobe is great, the background is great. If the sun was behind the couple, like see where the tip of this castle is or whatever, if the sun was like right up here, kind of going through the trees, and backlighting them, then it would be just like a knockout, perfect light and airy photo. Those are my little quibbles with it, but it fits most of the checklist. Awesome photo. We got two more, and then I'll take two questions, and then we're done. Uh, this is by Kristen Hansen. I picked this one because it's in the desert. I don't have any desert photos yet. This is a Nikon file. So we'll do, oh, it looks like, all right. Let's do Nikon uh, 400H. Lens correction on. This image is really super cool. So I think we're going to go with uh, open shade. Ah, perfect. And this is kind of crazy, but I'm going to do all hard. I think it needs a little more punch. So all hard. And then I increase the exposure a bit. Uh, and it needs just a little bit of magenta. All right, there we go. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna crop it in a little bit. It's just so much sky. I want you to be able to see the couple. Uh, let me get let me get rid of that little column. There we go. Ah. All right. All right. So let's break this photo down real quick. Uh, it has a really nice separation from the background. So got that right. The background is like a nice neutral color. It's not it's not busy because it's blurry and it's, it looks like a watercolor painting. Their wardrobe, so the ways that this could be better is their wardrobe could be um, more, I don't know, classic. Like it's very, it's very contemporary wardrobe right now. He's wearing jeans and like, um, like hiking boots. If he, if he was in like a white suit or like a, a light gray suit or something like that, or maybe a white shirt and like chinos or something like that, it would 
it would make it feel more of that sophisticated light and airy fine art look. However, I think these clients look amazing and this photo looks great. I would love to give it to them. That, that's just my little quibble. And the other thing is that it's shot at a time of the day where there's no detail at all in the sky. And if you would just wait until like blue hour, which is right around sunset or, right, or it's the hour after sunset, you would probably get some nice sky detail in there and still get that light and airy look, but it's a great photo. And then here is our last photo. Let me bring up our checklist one more time. I'm going to do both checklists. So just to kind of wrap things up, the foundation is perfect for this photo. It's backlit a little bit. You can see on the edge of her hair and it's an open shade. Her location is vegetation and neutral. There's no like big red blotches or anything or signs or anything. Her wardrobe is neutral. It's literally white and peach. Perfect. And it's shot wide open at with a 135 millimeter lens at 1.8. Everything is here. Um, this is your classic fine art photo that, that you're, you're trying to get to. I'm going to edit it with no preset real quick to show you that just it's just ready to rock. Like, there we go. Simple edit, two clicks. It's a nice, it's a super nice photo. So keep that in mind while you're shooting. The ingredients have to be right. Now let's do the light and airy edit checklist. Oh, this is by Sirahai Sarachuk again. Thank you for sending it in. You are a busy bee. You sent us a lot of stuff. So let's do um, Fuji 400H. Uh, let's see. We'll do cloudy for the white balance. Oh, I forgot to do lens correction. Lens correction on. Going to increase the exposure and then do all soft. Boom. And a little bit of magenta, just a tiny bit. Look at that. That is awesome. Perfect. It, it passed all of, all of my checklists. It's, this is how you get to a light and airy photo with no struggle. So I hope that this has been really, really helpful for you. Um, I'm excited to kind of break things down into very specific topics. And this is something that comes up all the time. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments here and we will be rebroadcasting this. Um, I'll take two more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Do we have any more questions? Uh, Jose, uh, Jose, I'm not sure how to say his name. Um, uh, asks if you use sharpening and noise reduction. So Jose asks if I use sharpening or noise reduction uh, when getting photos like this. Uh, I'll, I'll just, so noise reduction, no. I don't, I don't hardly ever use it anymore. That was like way back in the day, I used noise reduction. Um, my favorite solution to noise is just try not to shoot a super high ISO. And that really works with a light and airy look. You shouldn't be shooting a super high ISO anyway. Um, so you'll never have to worry about that. And then as far as sharpening goes, everyone's got their recipe. I don't touch sharpening in Lightroom. I think if you over sharpen a photo, it looks super digital. So I just leave it. Uh, when I do go to export, I export for screen at low or, or if I, or uh, no, I do screen the medium setting and then print the low setting. That's what I do. So your mileage may vary. Um, but anyway, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope that helps you in your light and airy pursuits. Uh, if you're new to Masson Labs, join our Facebook group. Just go to Facebook and type in Masson Labs community. Uh, we'd love to have you, even if you don't own anything yet. And you can go there and, and just put in a link to a Dropbox uh, raw file, like put it in Dropbox, a raw file that you, of yours that you want to see edited with Mass and Labs. And you'll have like 25 people edit it for you so you can see. Um, we love answering questions. There's a lot of good info in there on all kinds of photography topics. And we're a very friendly community. So it's the least you can do for yourself is join the group and see if we can't convince you to become a full tribe member of Masson Labs. Um, but for those of you who are familiar with me and Masson Labs, please keep sending in more photos. We, we are gonna be doing a live edit every two weeks on different subjects. Just stay tuned in the group. When you see the link go up, put your photo in with your name and the preset you want and 
you might be in the next live edit. So thank you very much and can't wait to see you next time.